Hello everyone, I'm James Kenny, Head of Programmatic at Search Laboratory and welcome to today's webinar on tracking the value of your display campaigns with Display and Video 360. A bit of housekeeping to start with, this webinar should last about 30 minutes. If you do have any questions as we go along, then please send them to us via the chat box, which you should see at the side of your screen, and we'll spend a few minutes at the end of the presentation going through as many as we can. So very briefly, for those who aren't familiar with Search Laboratory, we're an integrated global digital marketing agency of about 150 people split between offices in the UK and the US. So in practical terms, that means that we support clients at all stages of the online user journey, including SEO, paid media, programmatic advertising, social media, and digital strategy, to name a few. And we're able to do that globally by having an in-house team of multilingual and native linguists. Um, we're here specifically in this case for Display Video 360 and the programmatic advertising side of it. Um, I head up the programmatic team that runs our clients' display campaigns. Um, we are a Display and Video 360 certified partner, uh, so we've spent a lot of time on, on the features that I'm going to show you today. So a quick agenda. We're going to go through some key points. There's a lot to DV360, but uh, we're going to sort of pull out the key areas that are going to be of most use to you and your business, starting with a broad overview of what is Display Video 360, why it's worth using, a bit in creative opportunities and what you can do from a design perspective, tracking and proving value, the title of this webinar, and then a little bit on the end of a common question that comes up in terms of whether GDN through Google Ads or DV360 would be the way to go for you. So. What is Display and Video 360? Well, it's part of a platform called the Google Marketing Platform. So Google has a free and a premium level of advertising and analytics, I suppose. And the Google Marketing Platform is the enterprise level of this. It covers data gathering, data analytics, and advertising, uh, all those products below, which you may or may not recognize a part of it. And the area that we're discussing is just that display in video 360 area there. Now it's sort of one out of several different options there, but in fact, through that you cover display, video, native and audio advertising all within that one platform. So it actually covers quite a lot. Um, in terms of how that's bought for a bit of a bit of terminology for everyone, there's a couple of things to, to pay attention to. So there's two er ways in which you can buy this sort of inventory through Display Video 360, which might be referred to a bit later in the webinar. So open inventory, which used to be called real-time bidding and sometimes still is, um, is inventory that is available to everyone and kind of works in the same way as if you were running a PPC Google Ads campaign, you just say, this is what I want to bid on and you can enter the auction and are on equal footing with everyone else uh, to get it. And then there's private and preferred inventory. Uh, it goes under a few different names, but the general gist is that these are premium publishers. So these are publishers who have put their um, inventory and their ad space up on a market. And that is specifically for people to sort of bid on in advance of it moving to open inventory. For Display Video 360, uh, specifically in terms of then how you access this, there's a few areas of targeting that you can do, um, some of which are pretty straightforward, some of which are a bit more complex, but starting with your own data. So DV360 plugs into Analytics 360, it has its own tracking, you can upload data to it in various ways. So your data is always and always should be the key part of any advertising strategy. Alongside that, a big part of Display Video 360, which we will be going into in a bit more detail later, our audience lists, um, both Google's and third parties, and they are essentially cookie lists or email lists of people who fit certain criteria. Um, contextual clues like keywords or page categories. This is Google after all, and they know everything that happens online. So they have conveniently categorized the web for us to use. Um, but alongside that, we can also use text sort of phrase matches alongside any text on a website to decide if it's worth bidding for. Um, the environment itself of where the ad will be is pretty key. So this covers straightforward things like desktop and mobile to things a bit more complicated, such as what devices the user are on, what's their internet speed right now, what exactly are they doing at this point in time? Are they you know, sitting around a home or are they somewhere geographically? Are they visiting an area? Those sort of things can sort of be covered through it. And then other sources. There's a lot of other ways of getting data into it. There's a lot of things always being released 
uh, as new features in Display Video 360. So there's always new things to try out. So that's a brief overview of what DV360 is, where it sits, what some of the key ways you buy it are, and what exactly are the key sort of targeting features that it has in order for you to actually reach people. So why would you use it? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but we're going to focus on four. First is the audience data. Second is brand safety. Third is premium deals. And fourth is the creative opportunities. So we go through these one by one. So starting with audience data, um, like I said, I've got a lot of audience lists you can target. So Google is a key part of that. You can target a lot of stuff using Google's data. Um, and they have some very, very extensive uh, lists and types of targeting based on whether someone's generally interested in something or someone is actively currently searching or engaging with it a long time with a very powerful custom intent tool um, that those of you who have done any display in Google Ads may be somewhat familiar with. The difference here is that alongside that, you have a whole series of other data partners, which you may or may not have heard of, that partner up with Google and sell their data through the platform to you or to us. And that gives that sort of extra edge over what Google has it has on its own. Google does a lot of things, whereas these companies are devoted pretty much entirely to data gathering and audience building. And so some of the data that they have is incredibly specific and incredibly useful for any marketing campaign. Alongside that, you have data that you can use from other areas. So Google Analytics 360 and Search Ads 360, both can pass data through to DB360, Analytics 360 um, through behavior on site, and Search Ads 360 through behavior in PPC, people who've made certain searches, have engaged with certain keywords or certain ads. And then alongside that, you have Floodlight. Floodlight is the Google marketing platform or Display and Video 360 and Search Ads 360's method of tracking. So that is very similar to other methods. It's you put tags on a website, on your site, or on other properties that you own, and you can then track who goes there, what they do, and any custom information you choose to pass through can be passed through as well. This is what the audience tab looks like on DV360. So there's a lot of different areas to it. We're going to focus on some key areas, but Firstly, um, the four main types of audience that you can target. So these all have many, many subcategories, but in brief, first and third party audiences are data that either belongs to you as the business that will be running this, and third party are those other companies that I mentioned earlier that run alongside Google. So essentially your data or other people's data. Um, and you can sort of see below that's sort of what that list looks like. You can start type things in as specific as say Tesco, and those are people who engage with either the supermarket Tesco or the, Tesco as a mobile provider and other similar things. Um, affinity and in market are Google's own audiences. They uh, use Google's data and uh, tend to be a bit more up to date in terms of sort of what is immediately happening for those users, because a lot of search data and a lot of Google's data is very up to date. Um, and then there's also custom lists, which is where you build out custom intent audiences or specified audiences that you choose based on either a series of keywords or URLs or both that will put everything together. And then at the end there, there's also frequency caps, which I don't have anything nice to show you, but it is essentially a method of tracking certain audiences and impressions against those audiences. So if you have a lot of different specific types of audiences that you want to target, but you don't want to hit them with loads and loads of ads all the time, you can set up specific frequency cap audiences where this specific per this specific group of people will see four or five ads, say, and then this other one will see six or seven, depending on how much you think it's worth to you and what exactly you want to show them in terms of variety of ads. Um, this down the bottom is where a lot of the searching happens. So this, in terms of especially the first and third party data, but also the affinity and in market, this is essentially a big tool of searching. It's a database of thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not more of audiences that exist within it. Um, you can search various different ways, but essentially the main uh, workflow is come up with the ideas, the key areas that you want to target and then search for them in here and see what you find. Um, you'll see also that they come with a cost for third, first and third party. So third party partners obviously are selling their data onto Google. So for your media planning purposes, you can get a good idea upfront of every thousand impressions. What exactly am I going to be spending on these people and how much are they going to be worth to me as a result? And then finally, uh, once you've chosen a few, um, 
DV360 also gives you quite an extensive overview of exactly what you will be reaching if you decide to pick certain segments or certain user types. Um, and that includes things that you've excluded. It can take into account other targeting from elsewhere in the system. Um, so overall, within this platform, you get a very, very detailed look at exactly what you want to do. You can do people who have to meet certain multiple criteria, people who have to meet different kinds of criteria. It sort of lets you narrow down and build a profile exactly to what you want of what you want to be targeting. In terms of brand safety, there's a couple of different options here. So brand safety, is, I'm bringing up as sort of a key point because it is a lot more important than people maybe always give it credit. Um, there are a lot of cases which you may have seen on the news occasionally where an ad unfortunately appears next to something it shouldn't, you know, there's sort of a news of a plane crash or something. And then because it's got the word plane in it or it's about planes, some targeting system accidentally chooses to show ads against it. And that can lead to some unfortunate PR issues as well as hurt your marketing campaigns overall. So brand safety is a very, very vital part of any campaign that takes place across the wider web. Um, in terms of DV360, there's a lot of different options available. So you can obviously this list here that you can see targets sort of the main areas that Google identifies. But there's also uh, several different third party sources who can be used on top of this, who have their own technology and have their own tools and are built specifically for making sure that your ads always show up in places that they should and never somewhere where you don't want them to appear. In terms of the premium deal side, uh, DV360 stands out a bit in the way it approaches this. So uh, for those who don't necessarily know, is a bit of an overview of how ad space is normally sold online. Uh, there's a few different levels because obviously publishers want to make a good amount of money for their ad space. So they'll usually start off with something called a preferred deal. Uh, has a can be called direct deal, has a bunch of different names, but essentially it's publisher knows who you are, you have a relationship. First thing they do is they've got an ad space, they've got a price for it, they'll come to the people that they know and they'll go, do you want to buy this? Um, this is now available and a deal can be worked out at this stage. Um, that will sort of make everyone happy and get guaranteed impressions for those who want it. For anything that doesn't sell in that way, they tend to go to private auctions. So private auctions are auctions in the same way that you have to bid on them, but they are ones which you have to be essentially invited to or work out a deal. So again, it's you get to choose a bit more, it gives the buyer a bit more freedom, um, but also gives the publisher some control over exactly whose ads can then appear on the page. Anything that doesn't appear at that point then goes into open auction. An open auction is the everything else bucket. Everyone can access this. Anyone in Display Video 360 has easy access to this as well as on other networks and platforms. Um, but this can always get a bit complicated. Preferred deals are quite an elaborate process to arrange. You obviously have to get in touch with the publisher. You have to do the paperwork. You have to then send off the appropriate planning and get them the ad tags if you want to be you know showing certain ads on the page and display and video 360 is part of a new system of managing this to make things much more smooth and much safer for both buyer and seller called programmatic guaranteed so programmatic guaranteed is the concept of a premium deal or a private auction but instead of having to deal with everything sort of offline or through other channels Within Display Video 360, there is a marketplace, uh, which you can see here, which basically allows you to manage the entire process of getting the premium inventory within DV360. And the key benefits to you for doing this are that you get to keep all the creative together in one place. You can keep all the tracking in one place so you can see what the value of this actually is. You can make sure that what you're buying is actually what you're buying and that it shows in the places that you expect it to show. Um, and then also it ultimately saves a huge amount of time in terms of back and forth. All negotiations are handled through this. A lot of the initial stuff you might want to know is already in the system in terms of how many people can you reach? What's the general demographics of them? Where would these ads appear? All those things are handled sort of very clearly through this platform, uh, which makes things a lot easier to work and allows you to sort of pick out key things you want to run and then know that that's what's going to happen and everyone is happy. Finally, on the creative side, um, Display Video 360, a lot of people come into this from GDM or from other um, 
sort of easy to buy in platforms like Critio and Adroll. And Display Video 360 is very much sort of the enterprise level step up from that side of things. So it essentially gives you complete design freedom, provided you follow certain policy rules, as you will on anything, as long as, and if you have someone who knows how to build a HTML5 ad, uh, you can essentially do whatever you want because you also get quite large file size support. Obviously, you want to be careful of what you run and how much data you're, wanting, you're going to want to use, but you have this sort of freedom between the two to build up whatever you need to be uh, putting together to make your campaigns work. And then additional lot supported formats are in there. A lot of larger files and a lot of more um, engaging types of ads can be run through it, which ultimately all leads to more opportunity. Now, building a massive ad that does all the things you want and has a lot of bells and whistles and engages users in exactly the way you want can be quite complex and maybe you don't know what you want. So in this case, Display Video 360 also has a very useful tool for helping to put that together in terms of their format gallery. So it looks a bit like this within Display Video 360. So there's a whole series of them, a whole series of different templates that you can target. It gives you a bit of a view of what you want to do and what you might be getting if you go down it. So if we say pick the cue card one here, open it up, you end up with um, this screen. Now it there's while there are design elements to it, the key thing here is that this screen is basically upload, drag and drop, put the things in you want, see how it looks, mess around with it, adjust it. If you want, you can take it out and really tweak it if you want to hand this over to a designer. Um, but the formats themselves very easily allow for quite professional looking ads to be put together without any further effort. And then to put your own brand spin on it, you only have to make a few further tweaks. So you can drag in, say, an image into the back of it. You can change the text to say what you want it to say. You can change fonts and styles and make sure everything matches what you want. And with very little effort, maybe a few pieces of assets, um, you can go from sort of an idea to putting together an animated ad that's built entirely through just dragging and dropping in the system without having to put any sort of major design time or resources behind it. The power of this is that it gives you the ability to, instead of spending a long time putting together one ad and having that be your key focus of just everything you're doing, um, you can put together lots of different variations very quickly. Maybe in this ad, you want to show a few different types of cars. Maybe you want an image which focuses on the car and an image which focuses on the people. Maybe you want to change a few different messages, and test out five or six different versions, to see what people engage with the most. Because this is all built in the system, you can very quickly just go in, copy it, tweak some things, put it back out and decide sort of to see what goes there. Um, Google does say that 70% of performance is based on creative. So the ability to test these out and match them to those audience lists mentioned earlier is very key if you want to be getting the full value out of anything you're doing in display. As well as, well as this tool, there are also other ways of doing it. They're not limited. If you already know sort of what you want to be trying to achieve and you have teams or you have ads elsewhere, you don't have to go down this route. You can go through a few other ones. So there are some other tools called Campaign Manager and Studio, which we won't go into detail in too much in this webinar, but for the sake of brevity, they are an ad design and serving platform that sits directly alongside DV360. Um, and Google Web Designer is the Google platform that can be used to build ads. So all those templates that um, exist in DB360 plus a few others exist within Web Designer and you can use those to exactly make what you want and put it together perfectly. Um, and then if you have something put together already and you have your ad and you know exactly what you want, you can use things like ad tags, which will allow you to link to an external creative. So you've kind of got the full gamma of ads where you don't know what you want, you want lots of different variations, you're happy to work with the template to I already know exactly what I want. And the power of DV360 is that all of that can be put together very easily, very little um, time and resource required to do it beyond what you actually choose to do uh, that will allow you to build something that matches exactly what you want to achieve. So with all that said, You've got your targeting, you've got your brand safety, you've got your deal set up, you've got your creative set up. You've got to work out what it actually achieves. So in terms of working of it, the key thing with display is that it is not last click. It is a branding tool. It can be used as a reinforcement tool. It can be used as a retargeting tool. But at the end of the day, 
it works in a similar way to billboard advertising, newspaper advertising, and a lot of those sort of offline ones, just you can actually see what happens. So you've got to consider what you want to be achieving. So to start with, you've got to think about how are people going to interact with these ads and what kind of conversions am I going to want to achieve? There's two types, which you might recognize, post-click, which everyone knows, and post-impression, which is where you don't click the ad, you see the ad, it gets tracked, it gets tracked rather, and tagged up as on that person's browser as sort of a cookie that follows them so they can see what happens. And then both of those have different uses and different variations. And both of those are viable display options. Post impression is the obvious one to go to. You can do very urgent display ads that rely on clicks, but you are you are limiting what you're achieving and you're setting yourself a very strict goal in what you want to be doing. Also, you've got to think about where these ads fit in a user journey. So you got your conversion, that's great, but you're going to be running display ads the whole way through this or at various stages or maybe just at the beginning of it. So you've got to think about all the things that a user is going to do along the way, which could take a very long time depending on the nature of your business. So say you've got a video view, someone sees something, gets a bit of an idea of what they like, they view that, that gets tracked as them viewing it. So then the next ad you show them is a bit of a, is a display ad which they click through and they come through to some content. Uh, they read the content for a bit, okay, they think they're interested in it. So they go away and you show them a dynamic ad based on the content that they just viewed, which ties them very much closer to it. At this point, their brand is quite reinforced in your mind. So they go and do a bit of product research on the site. Um, and then eventually through maybe conversations with sales teams, doing further work, going and looking on third party sites for reviews, they eventually come through and convert. Now this could happen in a day if it's a very simple um, purchase for a user, or it could happen in months or even longer, depending on what's going on. And that is a long time to wait to work out what that video view was worth or what that ad click was worth. So one thing to know is that there's not actually one conversion on this path. There's actually a couple of others. So you need to be thinking about what the other things users will be doing on the site will be, even if they're not necessarily obvious conversions, even if they're not something that you're going to be reporting up and showing as value to the business, they're still things that will give you the tools a lot quicker to turn around and go, okay, this ad work, this ad doesn't work for clicks, or this video view is what we care about, or we don't care about videos. And this sort of things will skip that time down a lot to manage to put together something, an, an optimization plan that's much easier for you to work with. So you want to be thinking about sort of three main things. First thing is, what's the ad for? Why are you doing it? Is it, do you want to get someone to watch a video because you want to give them a bit of an overview and have them think about it later? Or do you want to be showing someone that's going to get them to act right now? And whatever you want them to do, that is ultimately your conversion point of this ad. If you want someone to just get an idea of what's going on, there are various brand study tools that can be done on a TrueView video, for example, or there are other actions that you can look at on the site in terms of additional research that would be the conversion of that ad ultimately. Um, also think about what other short-term actions a user could take. So a user could look at a few different things. Perhaps you have a few products that relate to each other and the user might not know which one they want. So an idea, someone clicking around a bit, having a look at a few, a few different areas shows someone at a very different stage to someone who goes straight to a details page and looks through. And all of those need to be tracked, not just in terms of thinking about building remarketing lists later down the line, but in terms of as conversions in themselves that show that this user fits into this bucket and is worth this to us. And this user is in a different bucket and is worth a different amount. And the key one, to actually turn this into value is how they relate to the end goal. So say 10% 10, 10 of people who view a product then go on to buy it, or 1% um, even of people who view the video and then read an associated PDF will then go on to engage with a sales team. Um, those all give you numbers that you can work with and having everything tracked and having everything counted up will give you ideas of okay so for every video view i need that sort of has a one percent chance of turning into a conversion so i need 100 video reviews or well, that's the average amount that it'll be worth to me and these things give you the idea of you can then tie that to money you can then tie that to definite value you can then tie that to a bid price how much you want to pay for an audience um, and also because it's a lot quicker and the journey from step of 
seeing an ad to taking whatever that desired outcome of the ad is, um, is a lot quicker. You can immediately start looking at optimization without having to wait for someone to go to the end and looking at actual revenue at the end of the day. So you need to pull all this data together to achieve it, of course. So there's a few different tools within the Google marketing platform that will do that. So Display Video 360 itself does a lot of tracking. You have conversion tracking within it, floodlight tracking. If you set all of it up correctly, you should be able to see all these different points and track additional details about them if you want to. But you can also pair it up with Campaign Manager earlier, which might be where your ads live. And that has some built-in data-driven capabilities. It gives you the ability to split test audiences and to have a bit of a bit of a deeper dive into exactly what is happening with your ads so those two together they pass information to each other they're very useful but ultimately if you want to tie it into everything you're going to need analytics 360 at the end of the day to sort of tie that up against everything else that you and it's a very intuitive system to work with so you screen looks something like this. So this is the DV360 insertion order view. Um, and you can see very similarly to any of you who've looked at these sort of screens before, this kind of standard GA uh, metrics, you can put together whatever you want. The key thing with linking up DV360 and GA360 is the extent of what you get in terms of both view through and click through metrics and the ability to match both together and put some actual numbers behind what's going on. Um, you can then also have a look at where these people are interacting and again the views are included at this point so you get a full overview of what's going on it's worth noting that you can also through campaign manager and, and through some other platforms within the gmp put together other trackers that might do views of additional stuff if you can get those sort of on certain platforms you can have other ads run um, that will allow you to track say a view of certain posts on a social media website um, and then finally, you've got your sort of channels and you've got your, your path put together. The ultimate end goal is to come up with what's an actual value. But because you have all this data put together, you can then pull together some actual data-driven attribution um, that will show you what the true value of what you're doing on display is in relation to how what people do if they don't see an ad or don't interact with an ad versus what they do if they do. And if you have it all set up correctly, you will more often than not find that the difference is a lot more dramatic than you might realize. So the last bit of it is what should you use? So the one of the common things that comes up that we wanted to address is Google Ads has GDN, has its own platform, has that affinity and in market targeting and can do a very good job with it. Um, so what, which would you use if you had a choice and everything set up between the Google Display Network and DV360? And we've kind of summed it up under these bullet points. There's a lot of nuances to it, but essentially the GDN is a straightforward platform intended for anyone to be able to turn up and just use. So setting up very quickly. Uh, the built-in templates are very easy to work with. They're called responsive ads and they are even simpler than what I showed you for DV360. It's a case of give them an image, give them some text, give them a logo, and they go away and it manages everything else for you. Um, and it also, as it is built into Google Ads, has that PPC lower funnel focus, has that click focus. The algorithm is trending towards clicks. It gets that immediate engagement um, for you. The issues that you hit when you're trying to launch an extensive display campaign is that the functionality is quite limited so those responsive ads i mentioned earlier you don't really get to choose what they look like they're built in and google ads will do a lot of the optimization for you but if you have very specific ideas of how your brand is going to be viewed you're going to struggle to get exactly what you want out of the gdn it does have support for custom built templates to an extent but the limitations on them are much stricter than elsewhere so generally we find you know if you have a small display budget or you're focusing heavily on lower funnel retargeting or something where there isn't that user journey you don't need to worry so much about exactly what people are seeing you just want something straightforward to enhance say, a search campaign that will get people engaging when they've come to the site after you know being on some other uh, websites that's quite an effective way of doing it but if you have a much larger budget you're going to need to look at something like DV360. So you've got the creative freedom, you have a lot more in terms of reach, the premium deal options and marketplaces, the higher end um, placements are not really an option on the Google Display Network. Some of them don't sell through the Google um, 
exchanges at all. So that's what DV360 has access to. And there's a, essentially it's a lot more levers to pull. I guess it's the difference between the GDN is, is your sort of ready meal of getting the food. It's very nice. You put it together, you put it in the microwave, you get it out, you've got it, it's done. Whereas DV360 is, is essentially just walking into a vegetable garden and having to make something. So you can make whatever you want and it'll be amazing because obviously everyone's a good chef. And you, but you have to actually put in the effort to do it. So that's sort of limitation on that front. It does take effort. It did, no, those levers to pull, you have to be the one who pulls them. Google is not going to sit there and do it for you. The expectation is very much on you to make sure you get exactly what you want. But if you have a big branding campaign, you have very strict goals, you have exactly what you want to be achieving and what you want a user to think when they see your brand, DV360 is the one that lets you get into the details and tweak everything to your heart's content. So those are sort of the main areas that we wanted to cover as sort of a brief summary of the question of how do you track value? We've kind of covered a lot of different areas of what DV360 is and where the value is, as well as how to track value. But as a summary of things to consider when approaching display, approaching DV360, approaching the idea of launching a campaign like this, there's a few questions that you kind of already want to have answered before you even start getting to this point. So you want to know, what your audiences and creators look like. You don't need to know exactly, but you need to have an idea of exactly what it is you're looking to achieve. There are billions of people online and turning up with a general budget and an idea that you want to target some of them is going to probably lead to a bit of heartache when you then have to sit down and work out exactly what it is you want to do. You also want to consider what it is that you actually need. Maybe GDN is the platform for you if you have a very small budget and you just want to do some retargeting. Maybe it's be quicker, takes a lot less effort, takes a lot less resources. Um, you also want to think about what the desired actions you want to be, as well as the conversions. You can, by all means, have your sales, but you also want to be thinking of different steps along the way. And you want to have those mapped out so that you can match an ad and an audience to that action. And you want to leverage the entire Google marketing platform. So you want to be looking at what Analytics 360 tells you. You want to be bringing in Campaign Manager. You want to be using the full um, influence of DV360 to put everything together. If you've got those answered and you know you want them to be run a big branding campaign and you know you want to be sitting there and you, you have that plan, then DV360 is definitely the way forward for you. And through the sort of various tools and the sheer volume of control that you have, you will be able to put together the ideal campaign that will achieve what you want for your business. So that was everything that we wanted to go through. Um, have a look, see if there's sort of any immediate questions. There's a couple that we've got that need to go through. So um, one of them is, is having GA360 necessary to show the full value of your display? Um, the answer is probably yes. Ultimately, you will not get through anything else the idea of what display can do to your email campaign or to your search campaigns or to anything else without that sort of presence of an analytics platform pulling everything together. And GA360 is the one that pulls together all the Google platforms such as DV360 in the simplest way possible to get you the results that you need. Um, you can get an idea of value campaign manager, as I mentioned earlier, which is part of um, the DV360 platform, does have data-driven attribution in it, but it only works in terms of which of my display ads work best. So you need to be really looking at what your overall impact is, and that's really where yeah, you do have to have Analytics 360. Um, another question is what does running display through DV360 cost? Um, so that can vary a bit in terms of the overall costs of it and depends, to be honest, heavily on the contract that you have with Google at the time. As a general rule, the platform fee for DV360 is 15%. But the way to think about it is the platform fee for Google Ads is 100%. So with DV360, it's not all sitting within Google. So you have a lot of different pieces along the way of data partners and, and other things that are sort of taking it up. Say you're using one of the other brand safety tools um, and you 
will see sort of a bit of those are taking a bit of a chunk of your bid. The way that DV360 works is the bid is the total amount. So it includes the platform fee, it includes all these fees. So you know exactly what you're paying. There's not going to be another invoice at the end of the day that surprises you going, oh, by the way, it had another 10% onto it. Um, and sort of everything that you do or that you optimize towards will need to be based on that total volume. Uh, and that's all those fees. And there's something you can very easily split out in the platform. You can see exactly what, where, you know, every pound of that uh, media spend is going and what it's going towards. Um, the other one is, what if I want to use the GDM for lower funnel and display video 360 for upper funnel? How would that work? Um, so this is quite a valid way of approaching it because the GDN is built heavily for getting into sort of that, that sort of click focused, um, that sort of click, yeah, the click sort of click focus sits in GDN, whereas DV360 is about branding and it's about getting that sort of um, awareness and that targeting out there. Um, you would need to be essentially tracking everything through analytics to get the full view of what's going on. Um, you would you could then run both through that. There are some difficulties in terms of you then be running through two different platforms, but you could still pull it off if you had very strict remits in mind of this is where GDN sits, this is where DV360 sits, and you have something like Analytics 360 at the end to pull it all together to build audiences that you can target you know, the other side with. Um, if, say, someone engages with the DV360 side of things, you can then build an audience, then go to Google Ads that will allow you to do um, GDM. Um, another question, to run a retargeting campaign only, would you still use DV360 or would you run it through GDN? In terms of cost for retargeting campaign, would GDN be slightly cheaper? Um, it would not necessarily be cheaper. In terms of cost per click, you may or may not see cheaper um, results. It depends heavily on what you're running and what you're targeting. Um, so you, but ultimately in terms of, because GDN is Google Ads taking all the money as just a 100% fee and DV360 splits it up, the, old, the overall CPM doesn't necessarily dramatically change. If anything, DV360 focuses more on that sort of co ad cost and the cost of running. So you can get cheaper results through there. Um, what you need to be thinking about with where you want to be running your retargeting campaign is what matters more, just getting clicks or getting that level of control and focusing on the brand and the level of sort of um, activity that you want to be running through it. Um, can YouTube display as we bought through DV360? Yes, they can. TrueView, the whole TrueView functionality um, exists within DV360 as well as within GDN. So you can buy um, the display ads for YouTube. You can then, and you can run that alongside campaigns that are targeting video ads and everything else, both on and off of YouTube. Cool, so I think those are all the questions. So yes, thanks very much for joining me and listening to me talk for 38 minutes. Um, if you do have any other sort of questions or anything occurs to you after, our contact details are here. You can talk to our team who will sort of put you through to anyone you need to talk to or will get you all the information that you need. Hope this was useful for everyone. Hope that everyone got something out of this. Um, but yeah, that's everything. And I will I'll see, I'll maybe see you again.